Hey, everybody in Facebook land and out there in YouTube land and anywhere else you are. <laughs> anywhere else you find, madam. Uh, how you doing? I'm glad that you came and uh, glad you're watching my show. Thanks. I, I appreciate it. And um, so I would like to invite some other people to come and watch the show. So I'm going to try to uh, do that now. Um, this is always such a pain in the neck. And I, but I notice a lot of podcasters do the same thing. And they kind of uh, just, you know, take a moment to, uh, you know, reach out to everyone <clears throat> and uh, see what's up. And uh, all right, so uh, Skeleton Key Network. So about the Skeleton Key Network, uh, I am the Skeleton Key Network now. Um, my uh, my other witches that were uh, the founders of the Skeleton Key Network, uh, Terry Wilson and Jess Beauregard. Um, it's it's I think that. I, th I think that's the right last name. It's In Ingersoll. Inger Inger. I'll get it. Anyway, uh, those ladies are they're wonderful people, and they just have other things that they have to deal with in life at this time. And and they just were not really that, you know, uh, into doing it anymore. And uh, since I had kind of kept the torch going, um, I'm going to continue to do so. And so. Uh, the Skeleton Key Network is on me, <laughs> and uh, I couldn't be happier. I really am. And so since I'm the head witch in charge, <laughs> um, I would love it if you'd come to me for sh with show ideas, um, uh, concerns, anything that you got, you know, for Skeleton Key Witches. Um, if you'd like to be a Skeleton Key Witch, um, let me know, and maybe we can get you uh, initiated into that. So it's uh it's a good place to be i'm i'm couldn't be happier really um i'm sad that they have decided that they're not going to podcast anymore at least for right now um but i i so appreciate them giving me a shot at uh taking over the network so that uh i can keep things going for them so and i can just you know i'm gonna start expanding on things myself because um i think that witches are people too and so uh, if you have gardening uh, tips or anything, um, you can uh, post on the Skeleton Key Network page. Uh, you can also uh, join the group for Witches by Witches, which is also an offshoot of the um, Skeleton Key Network. So um, we're still a witch network, you know, for witches by witches. And um, we're going to continue to do that because <laughs> um, I think that that's a niche that we uh, need to fill. And I think it's important for uh, all of us as a group. You know, um, you don't have to belong to a, a coven or, you know, be really a part of anything else, you know, um, but it gives you a, a, at least a forum for things, you know, and people to ask questions of. And, you know, if you're asking Skeleton Key Witches uh, a question, you should pretty much um, be able to know that they're giving you a good answer. Um, and so, uh, you know, any initiates that would like to come forward and be Skeleton Key Witches, I'm opening up the whole can of worms right now. You can also always catch me at, let's put up a banner. Uh, let's see, skeleton key witches at gmail.com. And I'm still going to be there. So uh, basically things are, whoop. <laughs> uh, basically things are going to be the same. Um, just a different captain of the ship. Yeah, same ship, different captain. <laughs> so uh, it'll be all good, I think. And I'm really excited um, to be doing this for, uh, you know, for all witches everywhere. <laughs> I really am. So uh, we're doing, uh, uh, let's see, you know, we'll, we'll keep a lot of the same shows. And, um, you know, if there's anything uh, anyone has an interest in, just let me know. I definitely am uh, up for suggestions. And um, I'm just sending out my invites right now. So I can get a couple people to tune in, maybe and say hi. Um, I uh, 
I, I like it when people come, you know, and, and hang out at the, in my podcast and, um, you know, chit chat and whatnot. It's always nice. It's nice to visit with people and hear what's happening out there in the world at large, because, uh, I really haven't been getting out much, but that's another thing I'm <laughs> going to share with you guys. So, uh, let's see, let's send that to you. Well, he's probably asleep. <laughs> and uh so and there's chuck he likes my show and uh we'll go with that and um just uh you know i gotta think that um somebody's got some information out there that could be helpful to me uh i'm selling a lot of stuff oh here um jess inali Beauregard, <laughs> one of the founding members of the skeleton key there we go i got her name right so that's that's good and, um, and she's uh, just a great person. And um, I, I wish that uh, her good health, good health to her. So, and uh, that, that'll be great. And then um, <laughs> I'll send an invite to Jimmy. <laughs> Jimmy Vincenzo, Jimmy Vincenzo, Vincenzo Esposito. I'm giving you a shout out. <laughs> so yeah, he's a, uh, he's a cool guy. He's got some fun stuff. Um, you know, uh, he, he does, um, I don't know if you'd call it art, but it's definitely something. And uh, <laughs> so anyway, well, there you go. I'll send that to him too. So said, there we go. Sent the show out. So people will come in. <laughs> All right. There's one, somebody here right now. Excellent. And hey, Crow, excellent. Would you like uh, a reading or anything? Uh, or, or do you have any questions? Or um, you, you were talking about show ideas too. <laughs> Keep looking for stuff because, uh, yeah, I, I really I really need um, support from everyone to, uh, oh, to get this going. So, yeah. Uh, I'm just getting out my cards. Figure I'll shuffle them anyway. <laughs> we'll give them a little bit of shuffling. Um, they do uh, like encouragement. <laughs> so uh, just like uh, we'll just do one card readings and see what we can glean from that. And if we needed another card, you know, I'd be uh, happy to do that. Hey, more. How you doing? Would you care for a card this evening, Mort, to uh, see what uh, the universe has to say for you? Getting ready for work. All right. And uh, Shani says, read mine. So, okay. Already writing down ideas, but I'd love a reading. Okay. All right. So, um, all right. So, hey, Meredith. All right. Everybody's popping in. All right. This is great. Okay, so we're going to go in order. So um, let's see. I think Crow is first. And so I'm going to pick you one card and we'll see what it says to the universe. This is for Crow. Ah, uh, the two. Two of Pentacles says to me that you've been juggling uh, your finances a bit and that, um, you know, you're you're doing, doing pretty good at it. And... Um, Let's see what else we have to say here. The juggling of finances is the thing that I remember the, about the Two of Pentacles, though. So. Uh, let's see. Uh, that would be on the last page. Uh, let's see. Two, uh, movement, balance, and growth through change. <clears throat> Suggest possibilities of fluctuating wealth that will likely require some sort of juggling act and uh, and bring um, bring with it both ups and downs. So uh, workload will be heavy and there will be no clear answer provided by this card. So there you go. Get ready to work. Be ready to balance things out, you know, your finances and your life and stuff. And uh, <clears throat> this too shall pass. <laughs> uh, it always does. Um, you never, that's the thing about life. If you're not happy with the way it's going, stick around because things will change. That is definitely, uh, that is a given. Um, speaking of change, 
I am going to be moving out of my house. <laughs> I am really, really excited and really, really nervous, but uh, I got a lot of stuff. So if anybody likes stuff <laughs> um, of the antique variety, um, <laughs> the new job opportunity I got is going to be interesting. Yeah. Um, yeah, it'll be good though. I mean, it'll help you to kind of balance things out and stuff and, um, yeah, the whole, I, I know all about juggling of finances and kind of, you know, just trying to keep things afloat and it's tough sometimes, but, uh, just keep hanging in there. Things will get better. And, uh, for, let's see, who is this? Uh, I think it was either, uh, Mort or, uh, Shawnee. I think it's Mort. As I asked the uh, second. So here's for Mort. Mort, I have the two of swords for you. Two of Swords says to me that um, that you kind of feel like you're uh, between a rock and a hard place with some decision that you're trying to make and um, that you just really have to trust your own intuition on it and believe in yourself. So if you're making uh, where in the heck is that? I, so if you have a decision that you need to make. Um, trust yourself, trust in your own intuition and that you have the answer. You just have to trust yourself with it. Uh, let's see. It's the two. And this says that, uh, oh wait, go the other way. Um, okay. Symbolizes conflict resolution and decisions that must be made. However, the conclusion uh, are likely through seeking inner peace and coming to a compromise. Well, this card suggests a general peace of mind, a, a general peace of mind. It leans neither towards yes or no. So it's a maybe thing if you had a question in mind. <clears throat> but uh, if you feel uh, like kind of stuck on a decision that you're just not really uh, into making because you feel like maybe there's not any good um, answer to it. Just go with your gut instinct and trust in your instincts to tell you the right thing. So that's all I can tell you. Look inside. <laughs> and so, um, oh, juggling between two jobs. Okay. I see. Um, so yeah. Oh, you yeah, help me move. Oh, well, that's so nice. Um, so then, uh, let's see, let's go to, uh, um, sh um, Shawnee. Shawnee wanted a card. So then we're going to do Shawnee right now. And uh, I'm thinking about Shawnee and I'm going to pick her a card to give her some guidance. And it's judgment card, the judgment card. So I always think of that as uh, if you have like uh, some kind of legal matter or something that's in the works. Um <coughs> Let's see now. Um, it would tell me that um, it was, was it judgment card? The jun not justice, but the judgment card. Ah, here we go. Represents some sort of change or transformation, likely one that has already occurred. It can mean the presence of a spiritual or professional calling and making decisions that will lead to your success answer to your question is yes. <laughs> so you're always making decisions though towards your success because um, she's a uh, my friend and she's a real go-getter. <laughs> she's a real type A type of person and she sees stuff, she wants it, she goes and gets it and nothing gets in her way. And I really admire that. <laughs> and I hope to be a little bit more like that. So, uh, Yes, <laughs> very bold. <laughs> so, and I'm I'm working on it. Anyway, um, let's see. Then we had uh, Meredith Hoggard uh, next, and then uh, Joanne. Thank you. You're <laughs> that's very nice of you. Because uh, uh, yeah, I'm I'm a skeleton key witch, <laughs> the skeleton key witch, the head witch in charge. Oh, been told to listen to your higher power. Well, you know, uh, you can, when you do things like the pendulum, when you use a pendulum, uh, it, that I've learned is tapping into your higher self. 
uh, even I think the tarot cards are, are tapping into your higher self, you know, um, and telling people what, what it is that they're, they need to know, you know, to feel either feel like they can, you know, have that confidence in themselves to go forward or maybe change course and go a different way, you know? <clears throat> so, uh, Meredith, I'm giving Meredith a card right now. And yeah, that one. Ah, Queen of Swords. Oh, that might be her herself. The Queen of Swords. Let's see here. Uh, let's see. Queen of Swords is uh, analytical, independent problem solver. She brings with her mental clarity or an end to something troubling in your life, but not without a painful loss or separation. She is stoic um, and astute, but gives nothing away as positive or negative outcome. Maybe is the only answer. So, well, that would be you. You're analytical and independent and a problem solver. <laughs> so, yeah, I would say that's you. And um, then, Joanne, would you care to have a card yourself? I would love to, to you know, get one out for you. And so, uh, I'm selling my home. I'm selling everything in it, basically. And I'm going on the road. And we're taking Skeleton Key off the on the road. Um, it, it'll be fun. It'll be an adventure for all of us, really. And, um, you know, probably visit some haunted places and, um, you know, meet some people. And we'll, uh, you know, probably have a lot of different, you know, guests and, and stuff uh, to just kind of spice things up and get out of our, you know, shake ourselves out awake again <laughs> and get out of our stupor. So because um, it's I, I think um, stagnation was the word used, uh, but I feel like I've been kind of just very static and I need to be more dynamic. So, yeah, I'm doing it. Uh, I'm not dead yet. So uh, we have King of Cups for Joanne. <laughs> King of Cups. And I'm just uh, decided I'm living out of the, I'm going to get an RV and I'm going to live out of it. Um, I can do that. I think it'll be all right. And summer's coming soon. So uh, yeah, I just, uh, I need to change um, a venue. <laughs> uh, so what do we say? The uh, it was the Queen of Cups, I believe. <laughs> hmm. Let's see now. The page, the Queen, a sense, uh, a sensitive, quiet, and virtuous woman who represents seeking and channeling a transformation within. She suggests a person who is good, a good listener, a loving counselor, like her counterpart, the King of Cups. Her presence is neither positive or negative. So it's just a maybe on that one too. <laughs> so there we go. I think maybe you might be the queen of cups, you know, um, a, a good listener or someone who's sensitive. Um, that kind of sounds like you. Yes. And that's exactly what I'm going to do. <laughs> if I can swing it, that is exactly what I'm going to do <clears throat> with the equity in the house. I can, um, you know, be able to afford to do that. And I'm going to work, of course, because, um, you know, what would life be without some kind of work? Um, I'm doing the podcasting, which I hope is going to soon monetize because, <laughs> um, uh, you know, I have. Um, yeah, that's what I thought it was you. Mm -hmm. So that's yeah, that's a good card. And it's it's neither here nor there. It doesn't uh, it's there's nothing. Uh, it, it's not negative or, you know, anything like that. So if you had a question, it's, it's a big, maybe <laughs> big, maybe on the questions. So yeah. Anyway, I just, uh, uh, it's going to be fun and, uh, you know, Sam will be with me, so it'll be great. And we'll, um, have some adventures together, uh, before it's time, for, you know, say goodbye, <laughs> the big goodbye. Cause you know, I don't know how old you guys are. Uh, I know some of you guys are still pretty young and, um, but when you get older, you have to ask yourself what's really important. <laughs> um, and you have to learn to let go of stuff. 
you know, things you thought were really important to you really are not that important. And um, you can certainly live without a lot of things. Um, Joanne, you're 60. So you, you know where I'm coming from when I say that, uh, you know, you really have to assess your life and ask yourself what's important and where, you know, where is this all going and what am I going to do, you know, with the things that I think need to make it to the next generation and, you know, stuff like that. Because, uh, um, you know, I, I just, uh, I can't be worried about that anymore. I was the caretaker of some things in the family. And I'm trying to get them all shuffled off to Meredith, but she's just not quite old enough yet for everything. <clears throat> so luckily my sister has agreed, I think, to take some things for Meredith. So Meredith, if you're still out there listening, Aunt Barbara is going to have some stuff for you. So, you know, when you're older and can handle it and you got your own home and stuff, you'll have some things. <laughs> so anyhow... Yeah, the RV thing. Uh, I've, you know, I lived in an RV one summer with Meredith's father. We lived, uh, we went, well, first we went to Alabama and we went and saw um, Terry Wilson of the Skeleton Key Witches. And um, we uh, had a great time. We went to, I think that was a year we went to Talladega and, um, or maybe it was Mardi Gras. No, nah, I think we went to Talladega that year. Anyway, we went to the races, I believe. And, um, it was fun. We took our cat and we lit, then when we came back to Iowa, we stayed in the RV the rest of the summer. I want to say it was November. <laughs> we were like, oh my God, we really got to move in somewhere. It's cold out here. So yeah, we finally found a place. Oh yeah. Yep. Yeah. So, and yeah, so switching jobs can kind of create that little financial sitch as well. So, yeah. Well, good. I'm, I'm glad I called that. Ah, that's pretty, that's pretty impressive that, you know, you, you know, that really was happening to you right now. So, and I, I got to call that with the cards. So good. I'm, I'm glad to know that, uh, that they're working for me, you know, and that I'm interpreting them correctly. And I think, um, I think it's pretty good. Um, it's going well. It's, it's going to take years to master this. I mean, years. <laughs> and I do it all the time. It's just very, there's a lot of subtleties and there's a lot of things that, um, you know, as you go through the years, like your cards will reveal more to you because, you know, you, you can see the message clearer and more in depth. I think the more you, um, it's like a reading, um, reading a novel, let's say you're going to read um, Charles Dickens, A Christmas Carol, and you're in kindergarten. <laughs> you know, as you get older, I think, and you try to reread A Christmas Carol, uh, and you're in high school, it's going to have a lot more meaning to you and a lot more, uh, it's going to have a lot more depth, you know, because you've had experiences of your own. And, uh, and I think that that's kind of tarot's a little bit like that. Oh, thank you, Joanne. Sending white light. Sending white light to you, too, and good good positive energy flow for everything that you have going on and, and everything that you need. So, bless you. <laughs> yeah. And, and I, I just, uh, you guys, I, I know most of you that are in here are really steady, hardcore, uh, skeleton key uh, people and, and, you know, fans and helpers and and uh, I just, uh, you know, I hope that you keep doing that <clears throat> for me as well. So, because uh, I intend to keep this thing growing and growing and going. And uh, we're going to maybe take it in a bit of a different direction, um, but still stick to the same thing. We're four, you know, by witches, four witches. And, um, and I think that that's the thing we're going to probably stick real close to. Um, because, uh, you know, it's the life of a witch is interesting <laughs> to say the least. Um, you know, if we just talk about manifestation, geez Louise, you know, it's something that's, uh, it's amazing. And, you know, I think a lot of times people, uh, mistake, uh, anxiety, uh, for something bad because we've been told it's bad. 
you know, but when you, if you have anxious feelings, <laughs> if you feel them, really feel them and just let them go, you know, like let it wash through you, that feeling of anxiety, and then put your hands out to the universe and let it go. Think of it as your magic, leaving your body and going out to do its job in the universe. You know, it's what you sent it out there for. And now you're trying to hold on to it, you know, because people try and put that anxiety down. Don't put it down. Let it flow. Let it wash over you and then go out of you, you know. And uh, I think that's where the magic comes from. But that's just me because it feels like a, wa a wave of energy, you know. If you really analyze it and you sit down and you and you really feel it instead of uh, trying to get rid of it, you know, um, you can't get rid of it. <laughs> it's no good for you to get rid of it. And uh, you just have to learn how to manage it. And it's the same with a lot of things in our lives, you know, uh, <laughs> like when you're an overeater, <laughs> food's not going to go away. You just have to learn how to manage it, you know. And so, oh, I've been having terrible sinus lately. And I had a little bit of a sore throat, but I'm not getting sick. I took some oil of oregano. Oh, let me tell you about that. Oil of oregano. If you didn't know anything about it before, it's, a, it's great. It's awesome stuff. So, I had diverticulitis. And it was not good. It, I stayed in bed. I just died every night after work. I would go in uh, and I'd work my four hours and I'd come home and die. You know, I'd drag myself out of bed to just go do my four hours at work and then go home and die. You know, for 10 days, I was ready to go to the, the ER or something. But I overheard a coworker talking about oil of oregano and how great it was for her patients. They were not really nearby uh, an MD. She was kind of in a community where there wasn't really great access. <laughs> VIX 44D nighttime, oh yeah. Oh God, that old VIX 44 tastes like Jägermeister. I don't know why, but it does. <laughs> so anyway, yeah, that's good stuff too. But anyway, this oil of oregano, I was, uh, um, I'm thinking, okay, I'll give it a shot. And I put four drops in a, a, like a shot glass of water and I did that for five days. And then I, and I chase it with water after that too, cause it's kind of spicy. So I chase it with even more, you know, but then, uh, after five days I quit, uh, doing it and by God, that diverticulitis went away and I really seldom even get the hint of it. Um, but I, I, when I do, I take some oil of oregano and it goes away and any kind of bacterial infection that you have, um, or, you know, anything like that oil of oregano is super de duper and it's, uh, you know, it's worth a try, you know, if it works, it works great. If it doesn't, well, you know, you just spent a few bucks on a bottle of oil of oregano, but you can now, you know, drop onto your pizza or something for a little extra kick because, <laughs> you know, it is oil of oregano. Uh, make sure you get the good stuff though um, from like the pharmacy. You know, it should be like, you know, medical grade, whatever. <laughs> so, but yes. And, uh, and I grow oregano in the garden. So then I have that fresh, uh, I can use, you can put it in water. You can do anything, you know, eat, eat some, have some spaghetti <laughs> and, uh, <clears throat> it's good and good for you. So that's my little tip for tonight, uh, with the, um, the herbs and stuff. So, um, I, I am very into herbal medicine and, um, you know, just having things from nature. Uh, the good creator gave us this stuff um, and it's in nature. And if we go out there and find it and, you know, use it properly, um, the things that we need to heal ourselves are all right here on the planet. <laughs> we don't need pharmaceuticals. We don't need people to... Um, you know, hand us a pill because it's just, it's not a quick fix anyway. If you don't change your lifestyle, you're never going to be well. And, um, you know, I learned that a long time ago that it's, 
I am my best physician. I know what I need to do. I, I need to eat more fruits and vegetables. I need to drink more water. I need to exercise a little more. I need to, uh, you know, steer clear of environmental toxins and things like that, you know? And, uh, and I probably could, you know, live on that for a long time. <laughs> and we're all the same way. If we just, you know, leave behind some of our bad habits, I think we could live longer and be happier doing it because we can get around and do things and, um, you know, be the people that we want to be, you know, and, and not uh, um, stuck in a, a hospital room or something, you know, because we didn't take care of ourselves. Yeah, I'm kind of down on pharmaceuticals. <laughs> um, you know, they've taken away everything from us that, you know, could aid us and then turned it into a pill that they can now market and sell. And that's just not right. Um, people just need to be left alone to be their own doctor, in my opinion. Um, you know, might need a little help now and then, maybe an adjustment to free up nerve interference so they can do things that uh, your body can work for itself because it really is. It's self-healing. It's you know, it's dynamic. <laughs> it's a dynamic uh, organism. <laughs> I used to tell people that I'd walk by them in the hall or something, you know, when I was teaching and I'd say, you're dynamic. <laughs> uh, you're a dynamic individual. And it makes people happy, you know, and they really are because dynamic just means changing. <laughs> we change to suit our environment because we have homeostasis, <laughs> yet another big word. So I, I like being a dynamic homeostatic individual. <laughs> ah, Angelo Anderson, would you care for a card? I would love to, to show you what the universe has to say to you, if you agree, because, you know, it's all about consent. <laughs> In the end, it's really all, all about consent. Do you consent to having a tarot card? Okay, I'm going to take that as a yes. <laughs> all right, this is for Angelo, my good friend. Ah, the emperor. I think it might be talking about you. Let's see here. Pretty sure it is. That's funny. Um, because you are sort of like that. Um, hey, I need to know when your birthday is because uh, uh, <laughs> I have a cookie cutter in the shape of a Superman shield. <laughs> and I'm making some cookies. Let's see here. Um the uh it's probably on this other page because it's probably the first one it is no oh, the fool that's right the fool is the first one and then the magician high priestess empress emperor uh let's see stands for all things fatherly he is structure order and authority in my life <laughs> or in your life while moving forward in your endeavors this card indicates that Assertiveness and rationality will take you a long way. With that, your answer is yes. So if you had a question, it's yes. And uh, <laughs> I-28. <laughs> uh, this isn't bingo, but we could play that. I do have a bingo set. That's funny. So honestly, I think I think the emperor card is you. Because <laughs> that's, that's kind of what you, uh, uh, you know, that's what you mean to me, kind of. <laughs> and uh, and it's a good thing. Yep. Awesome. There you go. <laughs> I don't know. It didn't really tell you much about the universe, but, you know, it just let, you know. <laughs> yeah. Oh, yeah. There you go. That'd be awesome. Um, you know, anytime. Uh, and then yeah, you should come look at stuff at my house and see if there's anything that you can't live without here. Cause, um, I really have a lot of stuff that I need to get rid of 
And um, it, or if there's anything you need, you know, there's lots of things I'm giving away as well. Uh, I don't know. Uh, you probably don't need much, but <laughs> yeah, we'll see if there's not something that you could take just as a souvenir of, of the whole madam experience. So, but you know, I'm, I'm not sad about it. I really um, looking at it as a new adventure. Um, I was going to have to move for work anyways, uh, I imagine, because um, uh, this area is not a great area to be a chiropractor in only because there's so many <laughs> and they're constantly churning them out at the college. So you really need to get away from here a little bit, I think, and go where, you know, there's not as many people that, uh, you know, there, there, there's a lot more people either way, <laughs> but uh, yeah, some, some communities are underserved even here in Iowa. So, um, you know, there's places I can go uh, and, uh, winter will be over soon. I just, uh, winter's just such a bitch. I hate it. Uh, but uh, I'll, I'm looking forward to uh, springtime. So, um, but yes, I think, uh, you know, if anybody, um, if you need anything, if you need a fur coat, <laughs> I have a couple fur coats I think I'm going to get rid of. <laughs> Roll Tide Cobama. <laughs> well, you know, when I... As it so happens, I do have a license to practice chiropractic down in Alabama. Um, I'm not really much of a Southern girl, but, you know, if somebody needed an associate or some help, you know, on a temporary basis, at least it's warm there. <laughs> oh, yeah. Go down to Mobile. Down on the Gulf, you know, the Gulf Coast. Ooh, and you know what? Wheel of Fortune popped out. So you never know. Wheel of Fortune and the um, Four of Wands. Hmm. wonder what that means. Let's take a look, shall we? <laughs> hmm. Let's see. The, uh... The Wheel of Fortune. I know it means change. Um, like, quick change, too. Or maybe that's the tower. That's the fast change. And not for the better. <laughs> uh, let's see. It's the Wheel of Fortune. Stands for luck. Changes and a new direction in my life, right? Um, well, it also shows ups and downs. The overall feel of the card is a positive one, uh, indicating changes for the better and good fortune. So I think I'm doing the right thing um, with, uh, you know, the move and everything. And um, then what's the uh, four of wands? Let's see what that means. I think it's a good thing. I think it's like celebratory thing. Okay, so... The four is, it represents pleasurable and harmonious new beginnings, stands for successfully uh, completing something in my life and brings with it feelings of happiness, balance, and forward progression towards good things to come. So talking about my move and stuff and, um, you know, all the things uh, with the skeleton key network and stuff. Um I think I'm going in the right direction. I think the universe is trying to tell me I'm going in the right direction with this. <laughs> and so I'm going to listen. Um, that's another thing about the cards. Uh, oftentimes I will get inspiration or uh, validation uh, about things, you know, <laughs> the swing. <laughs> uh, you want the one out front or you want the one that's in the basement? <laughs> Uh, well, maybe we should have a swing and talk about it. <laughs> so, yes, I have playground swings that I put up uh, to feed my inner child because it's important to do that. Um, even, you know, as adults, we forget to how to play. We just have to play sometimes. Um, you know, that's, a, that's another thing. That's a soul feeder right there. Play. Uh, 
get out some bubbles, get out some Hot Wheel cars, uh, draw a picture, you know, put your hand on the paper and draw around it and make a turkey. <laughs> you know, it's just, I mean, do something silly, uh, doodle, uh, you know, get some marbles and play marbles or, you know, just, uh, silly things, make a paper airplane and fly it, you know, the things that you did when you were a child. And, um, it really does help your uh, inner, you know, feelings of joy, um, because that's, I think, when we probably felt the most joyous when we were children, you know, and before all the weight of the world, you know, fell on us as adults, and we were told that we needed to be a little bit more serious about things, you know, so don't be serious all the time, just, you know, go out and play. Um, don't care who sees you swinging, you know, um, I'm lucky enough. I have swings in my basement, <laughs> but, uh, uh, you know, if you don't have swings in the basement, just go out and swing sometime. I know it's cold right now. Uh, so, you know, what's a good indoor activity is bubbles. Bubbles can be good even indoors because it's so for Pete's sakes, Get in your kitchen and do bubbles, and then when you're done, you can mop the floor. <laughs> and you killed two birds with one stone, so there you go. And uh, uh, and and you just feed your inner child that way, you know. Get some beads and you know glue them onto some cardboard in a mosaic pattern. I don't know <laughs> some macaroni. There you go, Mac food colored macaroni. And then you can glue it and make a mosaic. Uh, these are great crafts for, you know, that you'd give like the five-year-olds. And um, and that's it's good. You know, we gave it to them because it was fun, by golly. And uh, I think it's more fun even now because, you know, you take the time to just sit. And, and it's a meditative thing, too. You get a little time to just sort of let your brain relax and open to new ideas and new things. You know, um, I think when we, we over frequently overthink <laughs> um, decisions or situations, you know, and that's why we get dissatisfied with things too, you know, cause here you are thinking and thinking and thinking on this same situation. And then you find, start to find all this fault in it and stuff. Yes, that would be wonderful. I would, I would totally dig that. <laughs> and, uh, yeah, now go take your VIX 44. <laughs> Time for the VIX 44. I got to go to bed. <laughs> oh, funny. So anyway, yeah. <clears throat> if any of you know, the old-fashioned VIX 44 cough syrup tastes just like Jägermeister. <laughs> I don't know if there was any similarity there, but yeah. Um, oh, it's good stuff, though. <laughs> And uh, yeah, it puts you out. So good night. And um, yeah, so just, you know, don't be afraid to take chances and trust yourself. Um, learn to trust yourself. Uh, I have a hard time with that myself. But, you know, nine times out of 10, the first thing that pops in your head is going to be the right answer. And uh, you just didn't trust yourself enough. And you took time to overthink it. So then now you've just, you know, told your uh, inner self, well, I don't believe you. I don't trust you. So um, how can you ever make any decisions? I mean, it's tough enough anyway. And you never know uh, what decision you make today is what effect that's going to have on your life in 10 years from now. But, you know, you have to believe that um, what you're doing is the right thing. And you have to believe that in yourself, if things are telling you that you're doing the right thing, you know, you can't discount it um, like the cards telling me. <laughs> New beginnings, time for an adventure. Close that chapter. Yeah, this was my mother's house and my mother's dream. It's time for me to have mine. <laughs> and it'll be great. And I just, uh, I appreciate you guys sticking with me on it. on this great adventure that's going to be the Skeleton Key Network. Because, <laughs> uh, um, you know, I'm going to share with you guys all of these adventures that I'm going to have. Um, and so uh, everybody will get to see <laughs> what I got going. 
and it'll be fun and it'll be like a little travel log and you know infomercial <laughs> and uh so you know any any support you can lend to the skeleton key network whether it be programming or you know if you got a few bucks to throw in the kitty we are always grateful for everything so uh if you have any questions of me uh or anyone at the skeleton key network you can reach me at skeleton key witches at gmail.com i'm still there and i'm still with the skeleton key and i still am excited about all the new changes and all the new things that are coming up in life and i hope all of you guys um have hopeful bright futures that you're looking at too and if i can ever help you just stick it out there and ask um I'm going to end for tonight and thank everyone who's watching and everyone who will watch later. Um, and blessed be.